So in this video today, I'm going to be showing you how to use Bay Shakers within SimHub. Um, some of the actual features in SimHub that you might not know about if you already have Bay Shakers. If not, then it will definitely help you um, set them up and make them feel really good. I'm also going to be showing you what I use for my Bay Shaker system. Um, exactly what I'm using, roughly how much it cost and things like that. So let's get into today's video. So when it comes to bass shakers, a lot of people uh, tend to go for like the butt kicker. Um, I I wanted to go down a different route. Um, I wanted to make my own, um, and it was quite simple to do really. And anybody can do this at home. It's very simple, very easy. You only need a few tools. Um, there's mixed opinions and uh, things like that across the internet about what people really think is the best. Uh, me, personally, I think that two is all that you need. Uh, other people will argue and say that you won't want to use a corner. But the argument that I have there is um, my simulator rig is not very wide. It's um, just a, a standard size uh, simulator rig. It's not you know overly wide. It's just a normal narrow width, uh, what you'll see on like SimLab and things like that. It's just a, a 8040 extrusion, and I feel that if you've got one on either corner, once one once one of the butt kickers actually resonates, you feel it across the other side as well, so you don't really get distinguishing feelings. But again, that's uh, down to personal choice. So what I've done is I've used a butt kicker under my pedal plate, and I've also used a butt kicker under my seat. Now I've used the Dayton Audio BST1. And I have got, like I said, one at the front, one at the back. And I'm only using one amplifier for this. And it's just one of the small knob sound minis. Um, and it's ample enough. If you need any more than that or you don't think it's enough, trust me, it is. Because end of the day, you're not trying to vibrate your pictures off the wall or knock any uh, trophies over that you might have. Or even empty the cupboards downstairs in the kitchen when you turn it on. It's not about that. You want it to have a nice road feel. Um, like when you go over the curbs. You want it to have a nice feel of the actual uh, textures of the road. Um, maybe when you change gear. And you don't need to overexert it to the point where it feels unnatural or not real. And that's the way I've set mine up and what I've gone for. And again, I'm going to discuss this with you within SimHub. Um, again... I've used a 24 volt power supply because the knob sound mini allows you to go from a 12 volt to a 24 volt and I found that the 24 volt allowed me to set up the butt kickers better. So what I mean by that is uh, the butt kicker at the front, what I tend to do is have that running quite high uh, on the details. Again, I'm going to show you all this inside SimHub. The one under my seat, I tend to keep down quite low because I don't want it to um, overpower the feelings from everything else. So, for instance, when I've got the car in idle and it's ticking over in the pits, I've set the butt kicker to resonate harder at the front than the one under my seat. And what happens is you get the feeling of it transferring the, the, the feeling through the chassis. So, imagine being in a real car, like if you're in a race car or you know maybe a track day car when you're sat with the engine ticking over you can feel the vibration of the engine through the floor and the pedals a little bit through your seat and that's what i've done i've tried to resonate so it feels like it's coming through the chassis and i've done a lot of dialing in and a lot of testing my friends have been on this and they said it feels good um and again this is just with the setup that i'm going to show you uh within simhub and again the two data and audios the power supply and then obviously uh, the knob sound mini amp and that's all I've used. I made a 3D printed bracket to mount it under my extrusion and that's all I've done. I've mounted the uh, 24 volt power supply at the back of my rig and plugged it in. Um, it's all neatly wired. Again, the base shaker on the seat, I've actually just drilled into the fiberglass and mounted it so it's direct so you get a really nice feel. But again, you've got to make sure you don't run that too high over Otherwise, it overexerts everything and it feels too much. So you don't you don't have to have that on minimum. Again, Dayton Audio BST One is quite a powerful uh, you know transducer, and same as the one that's under my pedals. So they're both quite powerful. And this setup is all you need. Honestly, if you need any more than that, um, then that, that's down to personal choice. Like I say, but I won't want four of these. Um, I think two's fine. But just if you want to use four, then obviously you might need to use more uh, more amps. You might need two of these amps. 
uh, depending on what what type you're using these are quite a like i said like a quite big transducer you can get the small like puck types so it's all down to set up personal preference but i'm just going to show you now within simub um what i've actually set up in mine um and what i'm using um this is not on my actual simulator rig i'm in my uh, workshop room so i'm just going to be showing you uh what settings to do within simub but again it's not going to be in my actual simulator rig with my settings if anybody would like my settings, then just comment below and I'll give you them for you to try, no problem. But I'm just going to head over to Simub now and I'm going to show you how to set it up, what to look for, um, and how to get your USB, um, if you use an Obsound Mini Amp, uh, and get it to recognise it within Simub. So once you're inside Simub, <coughs> if you look on the left-hand side, you can see the shake base shakers. Now, if you're not seeing this, you can actually uh, allow it with inside the settings of Simub. Um, you just have to actually allow the plugin. So just make sure that it's uh, you've allowed it and that it can be seen. Um, I believe that's down here in settings. Then you just go to plugins, and then you just enable it down here. And as you can see, shake it base shakers. Just turn it on. So then once it's on the left hand side in your column, just head over to it. What you want to do is go over to sound output, and you will be given the output selection of which device or which speaker you want to run it through. Now. I wouldn't recommend running this through your um, existing sound card. I would always run a separate one because obviously you're going to get uh, audio feedback through it. You're going to get other bass feelings through it and it's very dull. If you use one of the USB minis, again, they're not expensive. I think my entire setup cost me about £158, uh, UK pounds, so probably about $180 and it's really good quality. Um, I'm really happy with it. I don't think for one second that I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Um, I've used a book kicker um, and I paid probably another hundred, hundred and fifty pounds more than that, and it was okay, but it was it vibrated a lot. Um, there was a lot of sort of uh, metallic rattling sounds coming from it, um, just because it's designed to go onto like an office chair and clamp. Now, there's nothing wrong with the uh, book kicker base shakers if you've got one, um, but I just feel that this for the money is better value. So. What you want to do is, when you're in the output selection, you want to click on the USB device, which will come up. It will say uh, USB sound output or USB sound card for the for the um, knob sound mini. So what you want to do is just imagine this is the uh, output for it as a demonstration. You just want to turn it on. And once it's on, you can drop it down. Once it's on, you can drop it down and it will actually show you like where you want it to be like the left and the right the front and rear and you can test it so you can feel the vibration on the front feel the vibration on the rear but what i'd suggest you do is this is what i do is i go on the custom channel map right so the the good thing about this is you've got more cost customization so what you can do is you can just simply turn off three and four if you're only running two if you're running more than two then obviously you'd have to turn on the channels per corner. And the reason why I run all these off is so that it doesn't get confusing and you can set it all up. Just turn them all off on the third and fourth channel because it doesn't need to be on. But what you can see on the left hand side is you can actually see ABS active, acceleration, G-force, custom effect, deceleration, etc. So there's all the things that SimHub will display within certain titles. There's certain things uh, like curb feelings that are not available in maybe like a set of course so that are available in Automa Blister 2. So again, you can dial all these in. And as you can see, just from road impacts, it's on the front left and the front right, and it's on. Now, if you click on this, show per effect gain and we turn that on you can see that we get a percentage now this is where you can really dial them in so for example if we were to take abs okay so if you just tested channel one and that's your front and you test channel two obviously that should be your rear what you can do is turn that off and just have your abs through the front so when you lock up the vibration only comes through your pedals, which is what you'd feel. You don't want it going through your butt because it be it wouldn't feel real. It, you don't feel the ABS through your butt. You feel it through the pedals. So this is what I'm saying about dialing it in and setting it up and how it can be uh, a lot better for tuning. And also, if it's too much, you can just simply turn the percentage down here and you can really fine tune it to where you're really happy with it. Again, you can do this on all four corners. If you have channel one and two, um, as the front and then three and four as the rear corners you could set this abs up across them two on the left and front right corner 
so again we come down to a custom effect we've not dialed anything into this custom effect yet so i'm just going to turn that off for now deceleration g-force i wouldn't be too fussed about running that and this is where i was talking about the engine vibration parameters so what i do now is on my setup i would literally put this down to about 20 percent and then you literally get a small uh, rumbling feeling through your butt and then the rest comes through the pedals and the rig again depending on how you've mounted it this is all about custom tuning i'm specifically talking about my setup here so for you it might be different i'm just giving you, giving you an understanding and an idea of how you can set it up so again gear grinding i tend to leave these on 100 percent depending on what hertz you've got it set up we'll look at that in a second in the effects profile but the actual gear grinding it depends whether you want it on or not i mean i don't really want it i'm not too fussed about it so i have that off I'm, i don't really miss gears that often if i'm honest uh, not trying to be big-headed but i don't and um you know i just feel that the the gear shift one is the more important one so if you get that set up right it gives you a nice thud as you change gear whether you're in paddles sequentials or a h pattern it doesn't matter it just detects the gear shift change if you set this up right you can get a really nice feeling so if you set it up so it feels like it's coming through the chassis and the pedals as you change gear you feel like a nice thump and it does really add a lot of immersion so again i'm just going to ignore the jump landing because i'm not i'm just going to talk about roughly my setup so road impacts as you can see we've got front left front right rear left and rear right so what i do here is i'd have both of these on for the front base shaker and then have both on for the rear so when you go off the road and you're hitting the grass or the gravel or whatever you you know you're not on track even on like a set oh like i said when you go off the track and onto the curbs and things the curbs are not as um you know the, you don't feel them as well within uh, a set oh and more compared to what my blister 2 where it's more defined but you can actually dial this into to give you that feel because it'll work off of the uh, actual map of the the game and as it recognizes that you're not on track and you're coming off the road impact start start to act so as you can see i've got front left front right so that it gets both on the front and then both on the rear and again you can dial them into suit same with road rumble you can do the same as same what i've just said there front left rear left rear right and same with road vibration and so on now rpms what you've got to be careful with this is if you've got this on high as your car starts to accelerate up the rpm range it can dull out your other feelings so again it's all just about getting all the things dialed in but what i tend to say to people if i'm helping them with setting up like my friends and so on i, I tend to try and not have as much too much on i just feel that like road textures road vibrations curbs rpm when not really on high um just for when it's on tick over and things wheel lock again you can have that on the front front left front right so you'd only feel it lock through the uh, base shaker at the front and it's entirely up to you if you want like wheel slip and things so that's just a basic um tuning uh, guide for you to try um with your base shakers um and then we'll look at the effect so here we are inside effects profile and if you just literally click on the edit profile tab you can name your profile so let's say we want this one for Assetto and then what you can do is pick any game obviously we're going to ID this as a setto because that's what we're using it for and as you can see it puts the logo on so you know that's the profile what you can do then is you can uh, sorry not on that tab what you can do is go to profiles manager and we can click on a new profile and we might want to call this a ms2 and again this wants to be id to Arma blister 2 and as you can see it puts the logo on so we know which one it is and if we just click on the profiles manager we can go back and go back to a set of courses as we're just going to set that up that's just a way of me showing you how you can add other games so we load that up and as you can see we're now inside the profiles i just moved me up up here out the way and <coughs> you can actually adjust everything here you can test it so as you click that it vibrates through your butt kicker or your bass shaker or whatever you're using and you will actually feel it where it's coming from the output you can change the frequency you can actually put it as a high priority so it overrules other things so it's a little bit more uh, defined 
so obviously the acceleration g-force is on i'm just going to turn that off just close it up and then the custom effects all down and as you can see all the things are off here so what we're going to do is turn on the ones that we want to see so as you can see here in a set this effect is not supported on the current game so again you can't really do anything with that so it might not be really worth having it on for a set you still could get it to probably feel like when you're locking up maybe through like wheel slip so again abs is not um, as defined but we can get something through as slipping like for like I said through the wheel slip you've got the acceleration g-force the custom effect if you want to add something in there deceleration and then engine vibration so I'm going to switch this on I'm just going to click it down and again you can see the live effects so while your engines ticking over in the pits you will see how high it is or how low what you can do then is you can also set the volume in here so again this goes back to the output tuning where you can simply adjust that to suit really dial it in you might just want to turn this down in here and then go back to the sound output and dial it in a little bit more through there until you just get it exactly how you want it again it's all personal preference like i've said tuning it in and getting it exactly how you feel now when it comes to the gear shift and just turn it on if you turn to tend to get this um frequency down a little bit to sort of like 30 hertz you get more of a, a defined thud a little bit higher it's more of a uh sort of a lighter sort of kick um so again just tune this to exactly how you want it I'd have that on high priority because it's um, you feel it then as you're changing gear and you're going down the road. So maybe you've got like the road rumble on and you can feel the vibrations. Every time you change gear, it's a little bit stronger and you actually feel it. Again, it's all down to how you want it and the uh, immersion ex uh, sets exactly how you want it to feel. So that's within gear shift. Again, we can turn road rumble's not supported, but road impacts is. And we can really set this up. And as you can see, it's got front left, front right, rear left, rear right. So what you can do is you can change it to just front and rear and then test the front, test the rear. So literally when you're going down the road, you will be able to set this up for the more pronounced feeling for the front or rear. Again, just set this up exactly how you want it. You will really, it's all about the settings and exactly how you want it to feel. So we've got RPMs here again. As you accelerate you'll get a curve come up so this is what i was saying before about if you've got this as high priority it's going to overrule everything and you're not going to feel the other effects um so just make sure you're careful with how you set that one up just minimize that out and down here like i said traction control it's not supported by game speed speed's all right to use but what I tend to find with that, again, is like RPM. The faster you go, the more it dulls it out. You could turn it down. But me personally, I don't think you really need all these sort of settings. I sort of run uh, a, I run ABS on AMS2. Uh, I run air engine vibration. I run gear shift, road impact. And I, I, tend to, I like road rumble in AMS2 because obviously it really shows you the curbs. When, as soon as you touch the curbs, you get a real nice rumble through the chassis. Um, it really does add the, to the immersion again it's just all about setting it up exactly how you want it you could also if you wanted to you could come up to controls and you can actually set a gain for increase and decrease um, which i don't do because with the knob sound mini how i've got it mounted uh, literally under my wheel on the left hand side i've made a little clamp and it's mounted there and it's got a little dial on it to turn it up and down so i can adjust it up and down as i feel the, the best for the car or the track again if you're on the Nürburgring on the Nordschleife it's quite a detailed track so it might be feel a little bit too much you can just adjust it down with that or again you can just set up a, a, an increase or decrease gain within here and then just going back to sound output just remember to set these up exactly how you want them for how many channels you have for exactly how many uh, bass shakers so that's all for this video uh, on how to set bass shakers up within some of uh, make sure that you like this video if it gives you some good value and uh, helpful tips on how to set up your bass shakers. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit that bell notification because I'm going to be providing plenty of content to do with Simub and uh, building devices to run within it, um, other helpful guides and tips. So make sure you keep an eye out and I will see you in the next one.